if you were ever good enough to go pro and if you're playing in algs would you keep grinding kills and making content i'm pre-pa physician assistant i'd rather focus on medicine and i'd rather focus on a, a you know a lifelong career just because we play a lot doesn't mean that we don't do anything else outside of this Today, the number one Loba is answering your most important questions. All right, we got a question from Raspy. If you could only pick two legends, considering you are playing trios as Loba for teammates for one whole season, who would you want on your team and why? For the longest time was Horizon, and I still think she's pretty viable even after her nerf. But I like playing with Horizons as a Loba main, and you could use that interchangeably with like a Pathfinder as well. If I have both a Pathfinder and Horizon on my team as a Loba, I'm very satisfied. So I might just go with those two. Okay, what are your uh, thoughts on defensive legends? You don't really need them on your team? or With ranked right now, no. I mean, it's cool to have, uh, I guess, with support, being able to craft banners, it's cool to have, you know, Gibbies and Castles now, now that they have a little more viability. But with this ranked meta and this system, uh, you need to be aggressive. You need to be, you need to have a team that can push with you. Hence why I like aggressive legends on my team. As a Loba, I can only teleport myself. But so it's good to play with a Horizon that could teleport both me and my teammate. Especially if my teammate was like a Gibby who can't teleport at all, or a character that has zero movement like Gibby or something like that. Horizon could take us both up her Q, or Pathfinder could take us both up the uh, up his zip line and get us to where we need to go. So I don't have to brace it by myself. Okay. All right. We got a question from Jeremy. Do you think that Loba being able to shoot while the bracelet is falling? would be a good buff for i've never heard of that not gonna lie that's creative but no i don't think that would be necessary at all i think we're asking for a little too much with that one um we can only <laughs> <laughs> Hey, get her S tier. Could you imagine? Yeah, no, that's like triple S tier. Imagine just throwing a bracelet, trying to reposition and just gunning someone down and then teleport. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be pissed. Safe so to no. say, Jeremy is a Loba man. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I like the way you're thinking, though. She definitely, the main story being, she definitely could use some tweaks with her bracelet. Um, but in that sense, no, nah, no, nah, that's too much. All right, we got a question from Mir Farzan. Do you think Loba should have been given the passive ability to take teammates' banners through her ult, or is the current support legend thing with crafters better i think at this point we just take what we can get i know for a long time it's something that loba mains have been asking for and it's something that they were able to accomplish on uh, mobile. But I mean, I, either way you look at it, for us Loba mains, this is kind of like an indirect slash direct buff to Loba. If you play her, you get to reap the benefits. I think it's a, effectively the same thing. You could, you could craft the banners, leave them in the replicator, run away to the nearest building and throw your ult down and get them out of your ultimate. If you want to feel like you it got buffed in that sense, then you could just do that if you like. But um, I do wish that they, she was able to do that. This is the way they chose to do it. And, and I'm happy with it regardless. So you could technically like sit by while a team is crafting uh banners correct and then if you're you know the flash you could grab them before they pick them off the yeah. yeah yeah so i've um i've been told that i haven't um experimented with it yet um but it, it makes sense to me and you should be able to do it the timing would have to be immaculate though yeah. um so if anybody does do that definitely post a video of that i think it'd be so funny <laughs> that clip would blow up on twitter oh yeah sure. dude i'd be pissed <laughs> could you imagine like as a lobo man you're already if, if you're crafting banners you're already down bad and yeah then just to top it off someone swoops the banners you're just like all right so never mind 100 100 all right aim assist do you think shortening the animation for the bracelet would be beneficial at all because that's what gets this player killed a lot yeah so there's two ways that i can approach that one being yeah i do think that they could shorten the animation a little bit after she teleports Two, if you if that's something that's killing you a lot you need to be a little more cognizant of where you're throwing your bracelets throw them behind cover as opposed to just throwing them in the wide open and that can help minimize the amount that you die after teleporting but yeah i do think that um they could slash it in half i don't think it needs to take 10 years for you to put the bracelet back on but they do that purposely so that she doesn't become this uber aggressive legend where you just brace it on people's heads and just one clip them although i would like that who knows if that's ever going to happen all right we got a question from buff path what are loba's biggest weaknesses as a legend and how do you counter them it was bigness weakest bigness biggest weaknesses <laughs> goodness gracious i just woke up that's okay well she could do a lot now if i'm gonna be honest i think that she's uh s tier i don't think i know that loba undoubtedly is s tier currently her weaknesses i guess you could say would be that bracelet animation it does take a little while and oftentimes it can get me killed as well the verticality of the bracelet it doesn't really go up that high at all i think it could go up a little higher yeah i mean uh, if you think about loba there's not too many weaknesses about her right now except 
up little, you know, small intricacies of her bracelet that could be improved on. But we have a character that can teleport 75 meters away in, in, in a couple of seconds. We have a character that can collect all the loot in one area in a matter of a couple of seconds. And now you have a character that can craft banners when their teammates die. She can pretty much do it all. She doesn't have too many weaknesses right now. I guess you could say her hitbox, uh, her being a little bigger than Wraith or Lifeline or Watson. Um, you know, she can get beamed a little easier. But yeah, we're, we're not talking about too many weaknesses when we're talking about Loba. All right, we got a question from Senior Smazlock. When you ult at the start of a game, what is the main two things you should look to get out of it? Yeah, I actually get this question asked a lot and it's it's super situational. It depends on what's going on, what I already have. If I get my ultimate off rip and let's just say I have nothing in my backpack, aside from some guns, let's say I, ha I have some guns, I will, I'll immediately look for uh, an armor upgrade and a, you know, a magazine of some sort for whatever guns that I'm using. Again, if I already have some attachments, uh, then, then I'll look for uh, batteries immediately uh, to keep me going through that next fight. But I would say it, it, it's hard to answer that question because it's it varies from game to game. But more often than not, I'm always looking for armors. I'm always looking for batteries. And I'm always looking for um, attachment upgrades. And of course, ammo. But, you know, that doesn't count as a slot. What is your opinion on the 301 this season? Because last time I asked that question, that was your first answer was R3. First thing out of the old. Yeah. Yeah. Again, if if I didn't have a weapon, I'm still, I'm still really looking for R3s even after the nerf. We could talk about it a bit if you like. I think that the R3 is definitely weaker than it has been prior. I still think it's very consistent still. And I, I find myself using the R3 in flatline a little more than the Nemesis right now. I'll keep it 100% to anybody watching Sweatband. The Nemesis is not overpowered. Stop listening to your favorite streamer. Listen to me and Sweatband. Nemesis <laughs> is not overpowered. I think it's a very balanced weapon. The issue with me for that weapon is uh, that first magazine at, at base level when it's not charged at all. I think it's, although the damage is good, I think it shoots entirely way too slow. So if you're pulling up on a a fight and someone's not paying attention and they're easily one clippable you're not going to get that out of that nemesis whereas with the r301 you're still doing major damage output in that first magazine same with a flatline same with a havoc it's consistent all the time the nemesis though that first magazine really turns me off and for that reason i don't find myself using it too often but when it's fully charged it you know it's obviously very strong all right we got a question from kitsun himi how do you throw the bracelet more accurately most times when i try to take height with it it falls a bit short well, well, just um line it up better you think that's it's, like it's, a <laughs> like a trial and error type thing though where you get the feel of how far the bracelet can actually reach yeah i mean at this point i've been playing her for three years it's like shooting my gun it, it just comes to me so naturally now i don't think about it i know what i can and can't make and sometimes there are situations where i need to literally line it up just like i said i'll, I'll ping the distance where i want to go and if it's within 75 meters you know i can take it so, that's so there's sometimes i have to, 75 yeah right? okay. i believe it's about 70 75 something like that but yeah it, it shows you the distance, the path it's going to take. So definitely just start practicing with that a little more. If you're struggling with taking high ground with Loba and you often miss, you're probably taking, trying to take high ground from like directly, directly beneath it. And like I said earlier, the bracelet isn't too good for vertical repositioning. You have to get more level with that object that you're trying to get on top of and throw in your bracelet from there as opposed to directly underneath that. That, that building or whatever it is okay we got a question from jacob he's struggling on when to place his loba ult down saying that it can often get your team killed in some cases i, I mean if you're uncontested off rip throw the ultimate down as soon as you get it if you've just finished a fight you put your ultimate down every single time afterwards of course if you're getting third party you can't help that but all things considered you should be putting your ultimate down immediately after every single fight that's the whole point about loba is to loot more efficiently and if you're not doing that and you're not playing her right as for getting you and your teammates killed uh, that just uh, that, that doesn't have anything necessarily to do with her ultimate that just means you have to be a little more observant of your surroundings you can place that ultimate typically i'll put it in buildings the potential the likelihood of somebody you know shooting me while i'm on it so even even if I think there's nobody around me or I don't know if anybody's around me, I'll put my ultimate behind some cover within a building and loot it from there to minimize the chances of somebody shooting me while I'm looting. All right, is there ever any situations in your Loba ult that you're grabbing? I'm not personally familiar, but how much do ult excels like charge the Loba's ult? 20% and I never grab that okay. out of my uh, ultimate. That, that would be a waste yeah. of, a, of a pick, but I do. I'm probably the only Loba main that you will see cranking uh, ulti acceler accelerants 24 seven if I see one i'm cranking it i never pull them out of my ult i think that's pretty wasteful yeah i was saying if it was going to be like 50 percent or something a little more drastic then it might be worth it but definitely not all right reto is going to ask as a new loba main what is one thing you should master in order to improve for newer players again i mean it doesn't take much skill to use our ultimate to be able to throw that down and loot so when, it, when we talk about 
uh, being skillful with Loba and people that play her better than others, it, it definitely primarily revolves around her bracelet. And so it's just getting more familiar with her bracelet, uh, being more accurate with her throws, being super aware of your surroundings so you know that you're not throwing it on an enemy. We know how Pathfinders like to grapple on entire teams. Uh, Loba can kind of do the same thing too and end up without having an escape. You have to be careful with that. Uh, and of course, watch my tips if you haven't already. All right, we got a question from Zaya. If you were ever good enough to go pro, I think you could go pro as is. And if you're playing in ALGS, would you you keep grinding kills and making content or would you fully commit to algs i appreciate i appreciate the question i guess it's going to be a little more personal so i don't know if you want it on your channel or not but um i'm pre-pa physician assistant is is my career is my passion is medicine with algs i can't fully give myself to a commitment like that uh, which is why i've never thought about it not even in the slightest either i do think that i have the skill and understanding of the game to be able to thrive in an environment like that but it's not my passion it's not my calling i'd rather focus on medicine and I'd rather focus on a, a you know a lifelong career as opposed to a temporary fulfillment with a ALGS. That's definitely going to be a refreshing answer, so I'll definitely put that in because a lot of people just expect all the number ones, you know, to not you know any other lives. path. Yeah, lives. Yeah, basically. Yeah, and th and that's a misconception I've been trying to shoot down since I've started all of this. You know, I've I've heard that comment thousands of times. It's like no, I'm 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 not like that. And while others may not be like me and to the extent that I'm doing, because I've done a lot with college and grad school, there's still people out there that are number ones that grow all the time that have jobs that have wives that have kids husbands whoever and so you know just because we play a lot doesn't mean that we don't do anything else outside of this well we just do it more efficiently than the average person 100 percent. well said all right we got a question from jack can you solo to predator or masters with loba is it possible this fits very well with what he's doing right now guys so yeah so i recently just started up a uh bronze and masters challenge with every legend starting from lowest pick rate to highest pick rate i've done a, br a bronze and masters with loba uh in season 10 in 22 hours in one stream so the answer is obviously yes you can obviously he goes solo queue with any legend if you're good enough to masters loba specifically is the best solo queue legend for rank for pubs or, or whatever to answer your question i think that loba not only is she able to solo queue to bronze and masters she is the best legend out of all 23 legends to solo queue rank especially now with her ability to craft banners if you are a solo queuer and you're stuck in the solo queue purgatory definitely try out loba and i guarantee you your rp gains will be more consistent all right, we got a question from Valkyrie main. If there was no Loba in the game, who would you main? For the longest time, it was Horizon. And that was even before she got launched into meta for the last couple seasons. Right now, probably be Pathfinder. Pathfinder was always my third backup. I used to play Pathy back in season two, ranked. Got about 5k with him. I don't know if I'd still play Horizon right now. I think Pathy might just be my backup currently. Or, or even Wraith. You know, that's my ex-lover. Used to play her with 22k on her. Probably be Pathfinder or Wraith right now. All right, we got a question from Ramunski. It says, don't lie, but what is the main, main reason you picked Loba? I mean, I can just give you the answer that you would like. Her big, bodacious booty. <laughs> but, but seriously, no, that's not the reason why. But I get asked that question a lot. She was just a, she was a character that came out in season five when I decided I was going to kill Grind. Could have been anybody. Could have been Caustic. Could have been Seer. I was going to main him. Probably would have stuck with them. Well, you got kind of lucky in that regard, then. Yeah, 100%. I, 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 know, I don't know if that's a joke. I don't know if people try to troll me, but I feel like people genuinely want me to say, like, I, I main her because she's sexy. <laughs> like, she's thick. Like, sure, go ahead. That, that's why. Oh, but that's the, that's the reason overall is just happened to fall into place with you correct yeah pretty much i had no clue what she was about they didn't know what she looked like at all so you can't use that um yeah. can't talk about her figure yeah i always knew she had potential thank god that the devs decided to buff her uh in season nine um i don't know if i would have been playing her i probably would have but yeah she used to be very weak and i'm glad that they that they uh buffed her to where she's at right now because now she's super super enjoyable yeah i'm not sure if you talked about it but what was what was the goal in mind when you started the kill grind so I actually talked about this on my stream a couple of days ago for like the first time. I remember at the end of season four, I was on PlayStation. I already hit Pred season two, season three, and season four. I looked around at people around me in the community and I saw what that kill grind did for people back then. The kill grind was glorified. Now it's kind of shamed. Back in the day, it was like an automatic partnership with mm -hmm. Twitch if you got number one with a legend. Um, so pretty much going into the end of season four, I was um, kind of done with ranked. 
Ranked was kind of going, I felt Ranked going in a direction that I didn't want it to. And of course, right after that, we had, you know, Revenant meta for a few seasons, Caustic meta for a few seasons. So I was definitely right about that. So I, I, I tried out pubs to grow my stream. I guess you could say to make a name for myself. It didn't work at all. After season five, I was number three for kills, number one for wins while in college. So I still think of it as an accomplishment. But I, I think after it was all said and done season five, I averaged five years being number three for kills and number one for wins. So um, who was number one at the time? Do you remember? Yeah, Princess was number one at the time and her stream was doing very well because she was number one yeah uh d car was number two and i was number three and so season six i didn't stream at all because the game made me rage so much with that rank meta i went back to rank the next season and then i started streaming again in season seven didn't think much of it and then season seven is when everything started to take off it was a very cool exciting moment in my senior year of college yeah kind of explain what that's like because uh, i feel like obviously there's only select how many legends 23 mm -hmm. currently that have felt that experience like what did it all feel like when you were exploding on socials. It is an experience that only a select few of number ones have even felt before. I guess as a public service announcement to all you number ones out there, you guys should be marketing yourselves better. And if you are good, good for you, respect to you. But it's a, you know, it was a good feeling. Again, for a lot of people, it probably would have felt a lot better. Um, I was in college. I've never been a Twitch guy, never been a streamer, never cared about any of that. Just always loved video games. I've been playing video games my whole life since I was four. So to be able to get into a position where I was starting to make decent money from gaming, something I've done for free my entire life, it definitely felt cool. It was my form of entertainment uh, my senior year of college. I had a girlfriend who helped build up my stream in that moment as well. COVID was a thing. I was grinding college like crazy, so there wasn't any going out. It was just, you know, enjoying those moments and memories with my community. Uh, it definitely was a, a great feeling. Hence why I got this uh, Loba tatted on my on my left arm. It's not because I'm number one, but it's to, to recognize all that I've built from all the hard work that I've done, the community that I've created. It's something I'm gonna remember for the rest of my life. Uh, so I definitely cherish these moments and it is a great feeling at the end of the day. Very nice, very nice. LOL Trick's gonna ask, what do you like about Loba's Heirloom. The thing I like most about Loba's heirloom has to be obviously the animations. I think she has the best animations of all the heirlooms in the game. But personally, for me, very subjective. I like how simple it is. I'm a simplistic man. I don't need much to keep me satisfied. And I like how they didn't go too overboard with it. I would have preferred if they were dual wielded. I know that's something we talked about in your channel last time. I really wanted that, but I do like it. I think it looks good. I think it looks great. Their attention to small details is what makes that heirloom for me. All right, then we're moving on to Mark's question controller sensitivity that's what he wants to know with or without alcs i am on 4.3 linear no uh small dead zone excuse me you could look at my full settings on my page i used to use alcs i used to be on 7.6 classic so this transition of 4.3 linear small dead zone is what all the pro controller players are using i wanted to give myself a new challenge it's definitely been a hard transition going from 7.6 to 4.3 linear but you know my my close range smg shots are better than they've ever been so i'm sticking with it for right now all right we got a nine Non-related question from NQP. Beer or vodka, they ask. Beer, 100%. I'm not a vodka man. I'm a whiskey man. I drink IPAs. So shout out to all the IPA drinkers in uh, Sweatband's channel. Love beer. Love beer. I see you're posting a lot more on YouTube lately. So good on you for that. Go follow his yeah. YouTube, guys. Yeah, go follow it, please. It means a lot. The last thing I wanted to say, as you as you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, to all the Lobo mains out there, keep practicing, keep studying my tips or whoever's tips you're going to. I promise you, Loba is one of the strongest legends right now in season 16. We've come a long way since season five, if you've been maining her for that long like I have. And to anybody that's pondering maining Loba or not, or maybe they don't, they're not thinking that at all. If you want more RP, if you want more kills, if you want more damage, play Loba.